Tell them who we are, Bob, but don't tell them where we're at. We will not disclose our location. For reasons which should be apparent. Well, actually, Homeland Security has advised us against disclosing our location. But we will let you know that this is the same place where Wes Womp got Not educated Womp. about the uh, Second Amendment. Weston Womp got Womped. You know, I he's the only one that's been on our show. I know that. And he's the only one that has, I think, showed any interest at all in the people of Campbell County. Well, I think so, too. And the milkman, he, he's he got the personality of a doorknob. He's about like a bucket of rocks. And Fleischman, he's the man that the establishment picked, and I reckon he's supposed to go in. Right. So I guess he will. But... Womp has been here just like a fellow citizen, ain't he? Yeah, he has. He's he shown a great deal of interest in it. And I really like, uh, you know, what he says, you know. I hope that when he gets elected... He don't forget what he said. What, that I like what he does, as well, or what he doesn't do, uh, as well as I like what he says. Well, there seems to be something in politics that when you get elected, you screw your friends... So I don't know whether we're friends with him or not. We may be safe if he gets elected. At least he ain't running for mayor. I think from what he knows about uh, politics here in Campbell County, that he would rather be friends than enemies. Well, I, that could be right. He could could have had a little forewarning there about yeah. insulting the populace. I, I told him that we took our politics serious here in Campbell County. I think he believed you. I believe he does, too. <laughs> so, what else is going on, Bobby T? Well, I don't know. You know, it's been uh, awful hot weather. Maybe I I'm, might, may be getting a little bit older, and I might feel it just a little bit more. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it's been unusually unbearable uh, as far as the temperature is concerned. What do you think about the federal sneak in with food and not bring them? Well, I don't know. You know, uh, uh, when's the last time we've had a lynching here in Campbell County? Well, I don't know, but we can't use lynchings. That's racist. We'll just have to have a hanging. They okay, just have to hang. Everybody okay. wants to be hung. <laughs> well, it depends on your uh, uh, gender. Well, I guess that's right, too. So, uh, uh, I have to mention that Dixie Concrete has been an ardent supporter of this enterprise. But don't hold it against them because they're good people. Well, yeah, they are. And uh, they do what they say they're going to do. They're very, very defendable. Their products are very, very uh, good. And I was just reading, you know, read a lot of Mother Earth News, you know, that... Uh, oh, you hippies are bad old, for that. That old tree-hugging uh, uh, magazine. You, you know. need to read Mother Jones, too. Uh, need to read Mother Jones, yeah. too. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Read in there where they have a uh, build a house out of uh, straw bales. Yeah. Soaked in a, a concrete slurry. Yeah. And uh, it's supposed to be one of the most well insulated mm -hmm. houses you've ever seen. However, if you chip the icing off the cake, you might have a fire hazard on your hand. Well, you know, I read about doing that. I'd like to see that article. But I read about building houses out of bales of hay a long time ago, and, yes. and, and they used, uh, they used, uh, what do you call it? Stucco. Uh, what? Huh? Stucco. Well, where you shoot the concrete. Oh, you use gun eye. Yeah. I reckon on 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 the on bales the water, of hay, yeah. yeah. That, you know, they didn't show any of them that were done this way in this issue of Mother Earth, but that would be a terrific way of building a house. You could stack your uh, bales, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you can wrench, you can rent a gunite machine. You can? Yeah, you can rent a gunite machine. And I didn't know you, that. You take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, <laughs> You 
you're going to get your wall top heavy in one place and turn your hell to hell. But yeah, you can run the gunite gun. He had to dig the concrete come out there with a uh, cement mix with appropriate uh, yeah. thickness. And, and shoot that bug. I mean, you can have it just uh, however high you want to. Well, that'd be better than trying to stack in there bales of hay soaked in concrete. Yeah. I know it, and because it said it was real labor intensive. I'd say it like, is. <laughs> but, you know, you could stack them bales. Ain't but one problem. Was, you actually could, it would support a roof prior to putting the concrete on. Ain't but one problem. Now, you can't get them but round bales. <laughs> oh, you know, you could build one like an igloo. Yeah. A dome-shaped house so the arch would support it. Right. And then you could plaster it, yeah. you know, gun at it. Right. And you'd have them finally. You know, it's crazy. And I know you, all you guys out there watching this, all none of you that are watching this, that you've got, eh, uh, sounds very insensitive, but your woman wouldn't be too satisfied living in a straw house, even if she wasn't one of the three little pigs. But anyway, you could, they, it's crazy to, to have a 14 room house, central heat and air. All that stuff, paying five, six hundred dollars a year in property taxes, when you just got one or two people living in it. That's crazy. Yeah. Now you take me. I've got a whole lot more house than I use, so I just hold up in one room. I could just chop off everything but that one room be right. this as well off. Right. Well, they had some interesting small houses in this issue of Mother Earth, and uh, they had one I liked particularly well. It was 12 to 28. Mm-hmm. You know, that's about the size of that camper up here. Yeah, and a rug that will fit. A rug, eight, a piece of eight, my rug will fit right down the middle of it. About eight, but that's about seven and a half by 28. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it'd be a little bit larger than that uh, camper. So, And I like it. They had done it real, real good, you know. Uh, the only thing is they had, uh, they had two bedrooms, but they both were loft bedrooms. And at my age, I think I need something on one level rather than having to call Well, you have to have an elevator. <laughs> uh, over there where at UT, the engineering department designed this year uh, energy efficient house, just a little kind of like that. It was it wasn't right. very big. It was right. it was about like eight by right. twenty or something. Right. And my daughter was involved in the marketing literature for it and stuff. Right. And all that was great. I mean, the way they did it. But you know how much money they spent on it? Nearly half a million dollars. There's a prototype. I heard something today. You may have heard it also. That somebody made the statement that government spends two-thirds of its time trying to straighten out what it has already done. <laughs> I guess that's right. They will take a project and mess it up so bad that they have to spend the next 10 years trying to straighten it out. Well, you know, there ain't never been a committee designed anything that was done efficiently or right the first time. It just don't happen. That's, that's what, uh, you know, the old story about the camel is a horse designed by a committee. Right. Well, that, a camel is a lot more efficient than anything government ever done. They just, uh, only thing that the government's good at is spending money. They not they're not good at bargaining. Other people's yeah. money. And they're, good at, they're good at spending other people's money. But, you know, the county, I think, has decided that they might have balanced the budget. Do you believe that? Yeah, but you, and I'm real pleased. I, I want to commend uh, the county commissioners for and bringing, Jim Slusher and Jim Slusher for bringing so much pressure to bear that uh, uh, what's what's uh, Mr. Mumble's name? Jeff Marlowe. Mar Jeff Marlowe. That Mr. Mumbles had to come up with a method of balancing the budget. Now, I'm all for cutting off certain projects until you can pay for them. Yep. You know, uh, I don't take any of the projects that they uh, cut off uh, were necessarily all that bad. It's just that we did not have the money 
to pay for them at this time without going back to the well for more water, and the well is the taxpayers that have to come up with them money every time they overspend. The main criticism I have of this budget deal that they just completed is that Jeff Marlow did not see fit to eliminate anybody in his office. Instead, he cut off the industrial recruiter's position rather than getting rid of one person in his over-bloated, over-staffed, overpaid, political patronage office. Well, you know, the school board asked for a raise, which I assume they're going to get, but they suggested or voted to have a, a 10 cent property increase to fund their budget. Now, I'm assuming that, that they have found some way to fund their requests instead of asking them to cut something. I'm sure there wasn't anything that they could cut in the school department. Uh, but you know, so. strangely enough, what they were under projecting to be under budgeted was very close to how much they spent on that new school building down there, that new that, that new office building. And you talking about the central office? Yes, sir, the central office. Which the they office did, where the central which stays. They did not need, which, which they, they were doing just fine. Need. Build these things when you've got money. Don't build them when everybody's broke. That's exactly right. And don't and build them unless you need them, and that's outdated just like a library. Let me mention something. The... Uh, number of students in the Campbell County system has dropped. Yes, sir. Now, that ought to indicate that we're going to need less money for the school system. And I think they have cut off a few teachers. 21 positions, I believe, is what don't, whether they were all teachers or not, but there were 21 positions. Well, probably some that, poor fellow swept up. No, I probably, probably, probably. But... There are an awful lot of ways that the county school board can cut even more. A case in point, which we are going to go into in depth, is the overspending on our transportation system for kids. Well, we've now, got a guy that's over transportation. Oh, well, he's paid what, eighty and ninety thousand dollars a year to oversee our transportation of our children. Looks like he can cover the ambulance service on any spare time and save something there. Right. But you know, transportation is paid this way. It's paid per seat on the bus, per mile. Not per rider? Not per rider. As a result, I'd buy me a train for it on the road. But as a result, a school bus owner, say he's got uh, 50 kids on his route. He's got a 52-seat school bus. He can go to a 74-passenger school bus, carry the same amount of children, and make more money. Well, I don't blame him for doing it. Be paid. Yeah, they're crazy. I don't blame him for doing it either. But they, they, they ought to be took off in a horse, out in a horse whip for paying it. Because they're paying uh, these guys that own the school bus per seat, per mile, not per student carry. And they ought to make them, uh, they ought to have to pay some, they ought to pay per student carry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't mean if Johnny don't go to school two, two days this week, he don't get paid. If Johnny is a rider and you go by Johnny's house and you stop uh, to see if he's going to ride and you go on, you still ought to get paid for Johnny. But you should not necessarily get paid because you got a, a bus that is 25 seats over what you're going to carry. Well, when I went to school, they used to count the students once or twice a year. They had a guy ride the bus and count them, and they yeah. paid based on that. Yeah, I know that. That was back when people did things on it. You mean back when every people counted instead of just guessed at? Right. Well, you know, they started, te they started teaching 
approximation in math when you're in about the third grade. Well, that's what they do in there, approximate. They don't teach you how much three times three is anymore. They no, teach you. They teach you. Seven and twelve. Yeah, somewhere like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, they don't approximate down Wilson's gas. When you order you up a tank of gas, you get a tank of gas. Right down there in the middle of the sawmill's holler, too. So, so happened he'll get up and pack it in with his feet. I've seen him do it. Well, I ain't never seen that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Exactly right. He'll get up early in the morning. Five six two five four four four. You got to get up early with a phone number Go like that. And get, get your tank of gas to do your uh, uh, grilling with. Uh, I've got a tank up there. I'm getting ready to fire up just as soon as we get off the program here and can some more corn. No, you might want to watch for a canner yeah. flying over. I am using a pressure cooker, so, yeah. so be, <laughs> be sure and look in this direction if you hear a loud noise. <laughs> no, you, getting out of the bed. If you see Ronnie's building go down there. <laughs> Ooh, I've been there. But yeah, I'm getting ready to use some Digger Wilson. Uh, propane here in just a little bit, can some more corn. Are you using that summer variety or that winter I'm variety? Using summer variety? Or are you using the mesquite or the hickory? Uh, I'm using the hickory. It's hotter, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oak burns good. Yeah, oak, oak also, yeah. And, uh, but I'm using the hickory blend. And, uh, I like the hickory blend when I do mistakes, too. Yeah, it smells good. Yeah, yeah. Do you still fit your fish on a shingle? <laughs> My fish? Yeah. What do you mean on a shingle? Well, they don't you know that that's the way they're fixing fish now? You take a, take a cedar shingle and put oh, fish on. Oh, they're on the board. Yeah. They're on the board, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. If I wanted to eat cedar, I'd eat cedar. <laughs> I want to eat fish and eat fish. Is it any good that way? <laughs> no, 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 I, I prefer them pan fried. I do too, with a little bit of bread on them. In fact, if you would catch some fish out there, we'd come out. If I'd catch some fish, I'd eat them myself. Thank you. <laughs> They've outlawed dynamite, you know. You can't just go buy two. You, you can't anymore. buy two or three sticks anymore. You got to buy a whole truck of loads. <laughs> uh, well, like I say, things we've done in the past, we used to throw half a stick of dynamite in them holes in that river down there. Yeah. And then we'd wade out there with tubs. Uh, there'd be, they'd be enough uh, fish to fill two or three tubs to come up out of that river. <laughs> Yep. Uh, well, we had a good time. You used, to, you used to have an old boy. We get. Now I'm just to be honest. We get. We get to drinking, and I had an old four wheel drive Ford, uh, three quarter ton truck, and we pull it just as far down the creek as we could get, knocking over saplings. You know, just until it absolutely would not go down the creek anymore. And then we would roll out your drop wire from the telephone company. It's rather buddy worked for a telephone company. <laughs> get a big roll of these drop, uh, drop wire. We'd get down there about 500 to 1,000 feet down the creek with that drop cord. And we'd have some drunk up there at the, at the truck with the wires spread apart. It's going to touch them on the battery when we were... <laughs> when, we're, oh. when we're ready to shoot the dynamite. You didn't have much sense, did you? Down, we'd be down there <laughs> getting them uh, things plugged well, in. Well, you need was a flashlight battery. <laughs> we didn't know that. <laughs> we'd go down there and we'd be, we'd be putting them, uh, what do you call them? Rooms? Camps? You can't camps in the half stick of dynamite. He's a... Y'all ready? <laughs> no, we ain't ready. Let me, you say you're ready? No, we ain't ready yet. <laughs> he yelled, fire in the hole, and you better get rid of that dynamite. <laughs> well, I know it didn't seem reasonable to me. I've watched my daddy shoot dynamite with one flashlight battery. Really? Yeah. He so what, did he beat the ground and hit the flashlight? Well, no, he had just a little old... Uh, D battery, you know, like he used to be in a flashlight. Right, yeah. And he'd run his wires out from the hole out there and put them wherever he wanted to. We usually had a longer wire that we hooked up, you know, just to the cap. Right. And most of we shooting stumps and stuff. Right. And he'd uh, run that back there and we'd hunker down and he'd touch that battery and it'd go boom. <laughs> well, I mean, you could do that with <laughs> We we use the twelve volt on something that old Ford truck. We use over killing it. You blasted the hell out of the cow. <laughs> we 
when that half old drunk up there, I'm not going to tell you who it was. He might get back to him because I think he quit drinking. He's a deacon in the church now. But well, he, well. <laughs> he's just about to be a saint in heaven. He's about to become a saint. <laughs> you know, it ain't hardly that hard to get something to eat these days. You can go to that Rainbow Restaurant in the morning and get your breakfast. You don't have to shoot no dynamite. You don't have that. to go blow no holes. You do have to go up above a speed hump, be a pump, be a pump, be a pump. But they're right down there waiting on you for that breakfast that special. That is the only difficulty that you will encounter getting breakfast at Rainbow Restaurant is the little speed humps you have to go across. And that's just to wake you up and let you know you're at, at the Rainbow Restaurant. It's just to get your attention. Yeah. They'll get your attention real good when you start eating their food because it's scrumptious. What? Scrumptious? Yeah. yeah. Scrumptious. Okay. You didn't know I know the words like that, did you? Scrumptious. Scrumptious. No, I didn't. You can be scrumped or you can be scrumptious, I right. guess. Yeah. You know, there are going to be a lot of promises made between now and Thursday. Uh, we're going to have a, a Thursday night special or not? I think we should, yeah. How are we going to do that? You go tell you what, we'll have a remote reporter. You go down to the election office and you call me and I'll announce it on the right. UG TV. We can do that. Yeah, you call me and just keep me well, posted. We're also doing up at uh, WLAF. Yeah, but we're, we're needed on the UG TV. Get from the horses yeah, you can go down there and be the horse, and I'll yeah, put okay. it on television. And I'll call back up here, and you can be the mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah just call out. Just call my cell phone. I'll be at home doing the blow by blow okay. report. All right. You can do that. You can interview the candidates in. Oh, Try yeah. not to get all losers. They probably are the ones that will talk to us. But <laughs> and we have a way of when they get elected, they don't no, know us no more. Those that lose, you know what I'm saying? See, there, see, there's what you get for not coming on wild yeah. money. See, yeah. there's what you get. Yeah, and if it wins, you just might well forget them because within at least the next few months, they'll pretend like they don't know us. Right, there you It'll go. It'll matter if you go way out on a limb to help them. Right. Stick your neck out so far you can't right. already get your Learned breath. Our lesson, didn't we? And we reckon we did. You know who your friends are after they get elected? Yeah, I was just noticing the one you were talking about when I was out there. Uh, well, you mean I thought I had it narrowed down to one? Well, um, uh, well probably one of the ones you're talking about. Uh, uh, I was out at Placeman's Low Shindy, mm -hmm. and uh, he made a point saying, way over on the other side of the group. Now, he's part of the end group now. Oh, I know that, yeah. Sounds like so we may have a little comment going here. Probably a girlfriend calling, folks. So, uh, I don't one, think so. One, one thing I do want to do, and I've mentioned this already, but I'll mention it again. We're going to do an in-depth analysis of the school bus. Well, Jerry, I hope you enjoy it. Call us and check in. Okay. Is Jerry checking in? Yeah, he says he's going to go to the election office when the early voting numbers are given out, then I plan to go to several of the candidates' parties. Well, we ain't been invited to none, so I don't guess we'll go to any of them parties. Anybody wants to text message the show, it's 423-494-5020. Or if you want to call us at 562-2676, but mostly we're just here enjoying ourselves, I guess. Are we enjoying ourselves? Can't you tell I am? You what? Can't you tell I'm enjoying myself? Yeah, I can tell. When are you going to start wearing that hairy hat again? I thought I'd wait till the weather cooled down just a tad. You going to wear that for the election? I need to do that, You're talking yeah. about the camp. Are you going to campaign any this year? Uh, just remains to be seen. Well, you can just wear your hairy hat and they won't know who you are and you'll get more votes. You think I will? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm yeah, watch shiny my, spot. I'm watching myself in the... See that shiny spot? Right, there we yeah. go. There I am back yeah. to normal. Yeah, I forgot my hat. I better put my hat on again. Yeah. I I wanna, let me tell you how bad... You know, no, I thought, do I look like uh, Charlie Daniels? You can't yeah, even see his yeah. face. Uh, I went uh, over to Knoxville yesterday. And I went back by Mayo, which is... Uh, 
uh, gardening store. Gardening store and mm -hmm. everything. And I thought business was bad at my place. This was at 3.30, maybe quarter to four in the afternoon. There was not a customer's car in the parking lot. When I went in, I thought they all were going to hug and kiss me. I went in and got some broccoli seed and some cabbage seed. And let's see what else. Maybe a little celery seed. You say I want to see Dale Mayo, a friend oh, of his, sent me. Are. Get you a real and, deal on them seeds. There was nobody there at the store. They had uh, three salesmen in there, and well, two salesmen and a cashier. Well, this is not exactly a booming time of the year in the garden. It's not business. a booming time of the uh, year for anybody. I don't know anybody's booming right now. Nobody but washing machine salesmen. Huh? Nobody but washing machine salesmen. Well, that's true. Washing machine salesmen probably. I'll tell you something that uh, is booming. What's that? And it's good and it's bad. I don't know how much Vivacare is having to fill in for the Campbell County Ambulance Service. But they have been doing an awful lot of runs up and down. I see them go by my store with the sirens and the lights. Lights are flashing. Now, most of the people that they transport, that is not the situation. Mm -hmm. So, evidently, they are filling in on some emergency calls for Campbell County, which it's good that they get to do that. It's bad that they have to make emergency calls. What we should do, and I'm not trying to put anybody out of business, but what we should do is just slowly transition the whole thing over to Vital Care and then tell them we want to cut out of the thing. There's a franchise fee, and not rob them. I don't mean rob them. I mean just, just be fair and get a little bit coming into the county instead of a whole lot going out. Well, Lord, uh, what has the ambulance service lost over the past five years? Two or three well, they misplaced six hundred something thousand a while back. Of course, two that three, was before two, the current two, three directors. Three million dollars over the past yeah. five or six years is what the ambulance. I know, but they just missed. They just failed to ask for that owed to them. Oh, I know. There was this. It said something, some thousand was what they failed to get beat. Uh, uh, they waited too long to send the bill. Yeah. Now that was previous right. to the guy that's running it now. I right. want to be fair about it. Right. And right. it ain't his fault the situation he's working under. It's our fault for letting them guys set up some foolishness like that. Right. Speaking of ambulances, there goes one now, I suppose. Right. That didn't sound like a lot of care. Well, they got a throat to your yeah, they have their own special sound. I guess so. I don't know. Five six two nine three seven zero. Oh, if you need to call Vital right. Care, and they they will take care of your request. They're never too busy to, to honor their customers. And if you need transportation uh, to or from a medical facility, or they probably if you just want to ride around the block, they probably probably do that for you. They'll charge you for it too. Oh yeah, they don't. They got that's they're crazy. busy taking care of sick people. Ain't got time for that food. That's, that's the reason it does not cost the taxpayers any money. You know, I saw something the other day that just absolutely amazed me, and I forgot the numbers, but the federal government went from... What? Federal government what? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on out there. federal government went from about, uh, well, uh, food stamps and over the last four years have more than doubled. Yeah. And 70-something percent of the Farm budget, USDA, right. it's for food stamps. Yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with raising food. It's right. got to do with giving it away. Right. Yeah. Well, no wonder. And they, they, they I mean, they, they, I've heard them complain forever about subsidizing sugar and milk and stuff instead of letting it reach a, a, a market level. And, and the farmers, especially the bigger farmers, were getting, you know, like um, the, 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 corporate farms were taking advantage of the system and that may all well be true but even at that it's just a pittance compared to what we're spending to give him stuff away well i know that you know i sell a lot of produce yeah and one of the reasons i don't sell more produce is i do not have uh, your food stamp cards mm -hmm. now i think i'm gonna get set up to handle them because nobody buys food in this 
county. Very few people buy food this county. For uh, cash. Most of it is given to us. And let me tell you about a situation that I'm aware of. I don't call any names. I know a couple that have one child. Well, they have two children, I'm sorry. They get $710 in food stamps per year, per month. Now, that, to me, that's pretty heavy, you know, because I still say I can eat for fifty, sixty dollars a, a month myself. Uh, they get two hundred dollars, nearly two hundred. We'll get to hundred and eighty something dollars a week in food. A month. A, a per a week, hundred eighty something a week. Yeah. And that they don't pay sales tax on that no. either. Well, no. I could feed the whole. <clears throat> Sunday school class for that. Right now, that's not really, even though there's reason to complain on, about what I just said, uh, two adults and two children, one three, four, five, three or four years old, one's newborn. There's, there's room to complain just about the amount of money they're getting. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that they sold all their food stamps last month. Or nearly all of them use very little of them for their own uh, food. Yeah. Sold them up, most of them. And then when the Open Arms Ministry opened their uh, food bank up here, they went there and that's where they got their food. Because so they'd already sold their food stamps. And, uh, well, we're food for working. Huh? What are you doing trying to sell watermelons? Won't you go and let them give you watermelons and feed you? And I mean, well, you know, just the fact of the matter is, we're foolish. Well, you know, if I had quit work, I'd be entitled to food stamps. If you'd quit work, you'd probably have more money, too. I would, yeah. But uh, what I'm concerned about, uh, Open Arms Ministry is a good organization, well, and has good intentions and everything. But I believe... Nearly everybody who needs food get food stamps, uh, and they've also got a, another program I think called SNAP yeah. for, for babies. When they get that, when they do, why do we need to ride down the street? There's always somebody with a bucket there collecting money to feed the hungry. I told him one day, and I got in trouble. I think I, when I told this on the show before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's them, Bob. I that's wild them, Bob. I asked him why you know, they were collecting uh, uh, money for food. He said to feed the hungry people. I said, well, don't you know fat people are always hungry? <laughs> and that's very, very true what I said. And I'm not throwing off on any individual. But people who don't work, People who draw supposedly, and I put in quotation marks, disability checks, because most of them aren't any more disabled than I am, or you, or a lot of people I know that are working. Some of them are, and I'm not talking about those who are truly disabled and who have a need for this type of assistance. But the majority, and I say the majority of people here in Campbell County who get a disability check, if they lived anywhere else, would not get one. Well, I don't, I don't believe that. I believe the same way all over. I believe we're subsidizing laziness in every county and city and state in this country. Well, maybe there's just not as many of them taking advantage of it in other places. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think the people here are actually smarter than other people because they are taking advantage of it. If they don't work and they get their health insurance paid, they get their food bought, they don't have, you know, a woman called me today about a Cadillac that's sitting out here for sale. Yeah. And she was talking about it, and she, she said, uh, she said she was calling me on her computer phone, but that, uh, and she was on a fixed income and all that, and she wanted a Cadillac. She, her other Cadillac store up, and she wanted to buy that Cadillac. And she's from out of town. It ain't nobody local. And she said that she was calling me on her computer phone. But I need to call her back on her government phone because her 
computer phone didn't call good. So I know she had a computer that was fast enough to carry on conversation on, so she had a high-speed internet, and she had a government phone that she used for incoming calls. And she called her government phone two or three times, and she really likes Cadillac. She can't have an old Chevrolet or a Ford. She wants her another Cadillac, which is all well and good. But how, what is a government phone if it ain't something men you paying for? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they talk on when you get in line and you, you've you got something as you scrape another together enough money to pay for something. You don't, you've got you some beans and, and some cornmeal and maybe a little jug of milk and you're trying, trying to pay for it and you're behind a whole shopping cart full of stuff that's paid for with stamps. And the people ain't got time to pay for them because they're busy talking on the phone. Well, well that's true. And you know, uh, I was talking about selling food stamps. If they don't sell the food stamps, they go and buy soft drinks. Yeah. And then they go around and peddle the soft yep. drinks. I'll tell you how dumb I am. A guy wanted to sell me a truckload of soft drinks one time at a real cheap price. And I could go into the soft drink business, and I didn't have enough sense to figure out why he's getting them so cheap until right. somebody like you explained it to me. Well, well let, me tell you, let me tell you how rotten the system is. You know, I still buy some aluminum cans. They can go and get a six-pack of Pepsi, Coke, Mountain Dew, whatever it is, which didn't cost them nothing. And put them four bottles in cans, soda pop. There, if the cans they're selling to me, well, that uh, twenty ounces of, uh, of uh, Coke, twenty ounce bottle, that's uh, almost a third of a gallon. Okay, so that means that's about two pounds over two pounds of weight, which means that a one dollar bottle hid in a bag of cans will yeah. bring a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> which they didn't have a dollar in to start with. The government was giving yeah. it to them. So I have to empty a lot of cans to get to empty, to get the full pop bottles out. I just take them out and throw them to one side because uh, I can tell what a bag all the way by picking it up. But they ain't got no money in those those drinks that they're putting in there. Well, they will just throw it in a rock. It'd be cheaper. Oh, well, that's, uh, uh, you know, so, well, that way they show, well, that just must have got in there somehow. They can't say a rock must have just got in there. If they ever put just a little bit of sand in it and stomp it, Oh, yeah, I find them all sorts of ways, you know, uh, uh, just uh, real hard, hard to get anybody to be perfectly honest about uh, that sort of thing. But, you know, you could take them out and count them. It takes about 32, 33 cans to make a pound. I had a fellow arguing one time over can specialists, and they contended that if you mashed them, they weighed more than they did if you didn't mash them. What? If you mash them, they weighed more than they did if you didn't mash them. The only thing I can figure is just trapping some liquid in there. Yeah, they don't weigh any more if you mash them or don't mash them. You can just get more of them in the bag if you mash them. Maybe that's what they're just doing. Yeah. Said, well, I carried a whole bag of mashers up there that weighed 15 pounds. I carried a bag of wooden mash and weighed 8 pounds. Uh, so you see, they weigh more. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's like, you know, if you mix vodka and water, you get drunk. Right. If you mix bourbon and water, you get drunk. Right. Yeah, if you mix, uh, you can even mix wine and water and get drunk. If you if mix, you mix, if you mix and scotch water. and water, you get drunk. You know, it's just obvious in that water is what's making everybody drunk. Exactly right. Like the, like the teacher was demonstrating the kids, going to teach them the ill effects of alcohol. Yeah. And uh, so she had a glass of bourbon up there, and she had two earthworms. Yeah. And she dropped those earthworms in that uh, uh, bourbon, and, of course, they just swiveled up and died. Yeah. She asked little Johnny, said, what did you learn from that 
Jim was thirsty. He says, well, if you got worms, drink bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Old Johnny wasn't no fool, was he? Wasn't no dummy. But, you know, uh, we have so much waste. We are, we have, we're not creating, we have created a complete generation of people that honestly feel that the government can, can and will and should furnish them everything they need. Well, we've got to... Uh about everything we need in this town. We've got uh, new uh, walking trails. We've got new libraries. Uh, we're pretty well fixed up to anything anybody could possibly want. Did you see the, uh, I guess you did on Fox News a while ago, the number of uh, cities that are in economic peril mm -hmm. going to collapse. They've already had a couple of them to declare bankruptcy in, ca in California. I don't understand how they can do that. It looks like they'd be required to just raise enough property taxes to pay the bills. I know they'd have a right, but it looks like they'd be required to do that. I think Jacksboro down there ought to file for bankruptcy. Anybody's dumb enough to credit this county ought to be beat. That's true. But you've got a lot of cities that are, you know, that are in economic peril, and most of them are in economic peril because uh, their uh, obligations for a public servant uh, retirement has come, become so great they can't uh, they can't take care of it. See, there's no way in the world they can raise enough taxes to offset the amount of money they're obligated in the future for these uh, municipal employees. Mm -hmm. When they get out of it, it's a clear bankruptcy. Well, it says right here that the second southbound lane on I-75 may reopen by the week's end, citing tremendous progress made on work to repair landslide damage to Interstate 75 in Campbell County State transportation officials say the second southbound lane could reopen by weeks in. You know, they will have trouble. Oh, well, once both southbound lanes are open again, however, a temporary lane closure would be necessary in the northbound lanes. It'll be closed on weekdays. I don't know. Well, that's just what I read in the newspaper. That's yeah. the LaFollettNews.com newspaper, by the way. I understand when they built that highway, and they were going to fill in that valley, fill in that valley where the uh, ships and earth is, mm -hmm. that there was a sheet of rock like this. Pile that dirt up on that slanted rock, and it's going to continue to shift downhill. Well, there was a fella told me that the way you had to do something like that, and besides bedding it with rock, you needed to shoot that base rock and break it up, and then fill, you know, rock up to carry the rock. Yeah. Rock but rock. if you shot it, it would settle all into one holding pattern and still let water go through it. Right. Uh, one of the smartest people I know have told me that, uh, right. and it wasn't you, so... I guess it's dependable. Right. Well, they, I understand they probably continue to have problems in that area. You know. Well, have you ever just stopped and looked at what they filled up there? Yeah. They've got fields up there a quarter of a mile high. Well, not hardly, but it looks like it. Right. If you get to want to know what the latest news is or want to hear where them ambulances are going, you can go to you uh, to thepilotnews.com and. Where are them ambulances? Well, I don't know. I didn't listen to that. I was listening to us. Right. I listen to myself a lot. Yeah. Well, somebody has to pay attention to you, I guess. I talk to myself a lot. Yeah, you Yeah, you got to talk to people who got a little sense every now and then. Is that bulldozer still sitting up there? What? That bulldozer still sitting up yeah. there? I just wondered. I know they got that job done. I was hoping they'd push their stuff over before they left. Right. 
And if you don't, we'll just sell that Budweiser, that uh, bulldozer. Sell that Budweiser. Well, <laughs> bulldozer. Give me two or three Budweiser, I'll go drive that bulldozer down here. If we need any parts for it, we'll go up to Napa Auto Parts. That's, I guarantee, I'm going to guarantee you they got them. I they bet you they them. I bet you they sell bulldozer parts. I gotta get a part, part plugs and everything. I gotta get a, a part or two for my John Deere back house. Yeah, you need more than one, I'd say. More what? More than one part. I need more than one. I need a tire tomorrow. I was gonna get down there and get it today, but I reckon I'll go tomorrow. It's NAPA Auto Parts. That's National Auto Parts Association. They got a whole conglomeration of sources. Got Parks stored Studebakers all the way up to Duesenberg's. I guarantee you. You know, well, there was a guy who uh, lived in Knoxville that drove a Duesenberg in the uh, uh, Indianapolis 500 and got killed. And his car is worth more than he'd ever got out. Of. How fast was he going? About 35 or 40? <laughs> I forget exactly. He's going less than 100 miles an hour. What'd he do? Hit a wall or something? I think he hit another car in the back or one hit him in the back or something. A Duesenberg. Yeah. You know what them things is worth? Now? Yeah. Probably half a million dollars. Yeah? Yeah. That's why where they got the it's a doozy phrase at. Yeah. There, there, I see several of them go on the market every once in a while. Well, I don't reckon I need one. I wouldn't know how to crank think, one if I had it. I don't think I'm going to put in a bed. But if I ever get one, I'll go to Napa Auto Parts, or I'll call them at 562-9406, and if that line's busy, I'll call them at 562-2529. Right. And I guarantee you, Randy will hustle those parts up for your decent bird. Yeah, you'll just be the only kid on the block with his own doozy. Right. He's got all kind of parts available, from even from transmission rebuilding kits. You know that you realize that? You can get a kit to rebuild your transmission. And it's right there at Napa Auto Parts. Well, I know that. They've got, got everything you can possibly special, need for an automobile. Uh, they got that uh, Castro oil. I didn't know that I say Castro oil. Castro oil. And a filter for your car, that's five quarts for $20.99. You can't beat that. I'm going to break down and change oil in my little truck. Well, I need to break down and change some oil, too. I used to go get it changed. You reckon there's a certain fella that would change our oil for free? You know that? Kind of get him caught up, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that right? We'd take four up there. Huh? We'd take four up there and get them changed. Yeah, good. Sure good. But that's not for auto parts. Good people to do business with, you know. If you need, if you need a little old, uh, quart of transmission fluid. They're a big quart of transmission fluid. All right, or you need a quart of motor oil, or you need uh, uh, a thermostat for your car, or whatever you need, a hose, hose clamp. They got them there at Napa Auto Parts, right across from IGA. Uh, old Jack for a bike. Yeah. If all else fails and you have to have it hauled off, the old Ridge Runner will haul it for you. <laughs> He'll haul you enough dirt to cover it up or you can gravel it and get it ready and get some of that ditch of concrete. Ridge Runner trucking, they trucking specialists. They know how to truck. Yeah, they do. They and truckers. It, now is an excellent time to get some gravel on your driveway, mm -hmm. or if you got a parking place that's uh, gravel, uh, get them to come down and spread it, and, and maybe it'll be perfectly smooth. All that will pack down and work into your soil where you won't wind up getting stuck up in your driveway or stuck up in your yard uh, come fall or come winter. I think everybody ought to try Ridge Runner trucking out when they need something hauled. Five. No, it's not. It's eight seven one twenty four ten. Eight seven one two four one zero for yeah, all your trucking truck. needs. All right, big blue truck. Good, good people to deal with. Rather than getting a little dab haul, or you can get them to fill up on them big trucks and bring them. Yeah, right. get you a big dab. So tell me something else, Bob. We got eleven minutes. Well, 
I intend to have another load of produce coming in here shortly. People have finally found out how good my demoters were. I got them growing at home now. I don't need you well, no yeah, more. Yeah, but you know, you, you probably, they're not as good as what I brought. Well, they ain't as big. I had four people come for tomatoes today, and I could not fill their order, but I will tomorrow. I've got yellerins. Uh, I've got yellerins. Have you got yellerins? Yellerins, yeah. Good. They're good with fried corn. You right. ever had any corn? I had, yeah. I saw them with yellow ones out. I had uh, two bushels of yellow ones, and I uh, sold them out right quick. And I'll probably come back with some yellow tomatoes and some, some of those good tomatoes I get. They come out of uh, South Carolina, and I'm not throwing off necessarily on Granger tomatoes, but to me, Granger tomatoes is mainly produced for their ability. They're to be looked at, not eat. To be shipped. No, they have great shipping quality. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard tomato, and these tomatoes I get are utterly delicious. And uh, I like them so much better than I do any other tomatoes on the market. And I'll have some more of those no later than Thursday afternoon. I'll have them for this weekend. I'm going to have some additional watermelon, possibly some cantaloupes. And it won't be long before we'll have uh, your scuppernons and your muscadines. I'm in on that. In. And we may have some peaches again this weekend. So uh, look out and see what I got. And... Uh, uh, we hope you'll trade with us whether you got a, a food stamp card or not. You'll sell something and come buy some real groceries. There you go. And we'll appreciate your stopping. I also got, got plenty of baby items. I've got something that everybody's looking for. And that's a, a pack and carry playpen. I got a, a, a new one. Uh, that you can buy for half price what you pay if you went and got one down at the Wally World. And uh, I had a walker. I got another one coming. That's already spoke for. Uh, every time we get a walker, somebody has asked for it before we get it in. The walkers, uh, this one that wanted one today, I said, that, I said, if your child is old enough to use a walking cane, I might can get one of those for him. But I said, I don't have any baby walkers. Uh, the only one I got in, I had it sold before I got it in. I got a double uh, stroller for two kids. The only problem you have with it, even though it's two kids, it ain't got one beer holder on it. No, ain't no count. No. They got the Martinez balls on one end of it? Yeah, I told them that. Uh, that would. Two babies in there, you need at least two beer holders. Those yeah, anybody can put up with two youngs at one time, they got to drink a couple of beers. And I've got a nice double stroller. I've got some nice single strollers. got some infant car seats. got some uh, uh, booster seats. i uh, got some uh, car seats for larger children. i uh, got any number of things down at Wild Bob. Wild Bob's Emporium. You're going to say Wild Bob Ronnie, wouldn't Wild you? Wild Bob Ronnie's Emporium <laughs> down there, but I don't think Ronnie wants to be associated no, with that. No, I've got too much pride for that. Yeah. But just come on down. I've got, uh, I've got some nice furniture, too. I've got a, a dinette table with six hard maple tables. Cheers. Uh, they're nice. You Beautiful. said tables. One uh, table. I mean, six. Hard maple chairs. Yeah. You go with the table. So if you've got anything soft right. you'd like to sit down in there them. There you go. And uh, I also got another little drop leaf table. Real nice. I've got some nice mattresses. Pool size, queen size. And I might have one uh, set of uh, twin size mattresses. Mm. I believe it is. Real, real nice set. I've got television. So if you've got twins, see Bob. I got uh, televisions. I've got a nice computer computer outfit. It's a Dell computer. It's a tabletop outfit. It's got the uh, uh, got everything with it, uh, including a printer. Is it got a year's free internet come with it? Huh? Does it have a year's free internet come with it? Yeah. I just wondered, you know. 
Huh? I just wondered, used to you get a year of subscription to AOL or yeah. something? AOL does that without leave. Uh, AWOL. Yeah. Yeah. So I now I've got uh, some karaoke machines. Got, you do? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we start singing. And I've got uh, some DVD players and I've got some old uh, uh, tape players. You ain't got no eight tracks, do you? I believe there's one on the Monte Carlo. Okay. <laughs> I believe there's one on the Monte Carlo. I also got a Monte Carlo for sale. Uh, in 1985, it was one my sister bought new. It has 83,000 miles on it. And I have a an 82 GMC long wheelbase truck. Uh, it's a 305 engine in it. Automatic transmission. You've got a white diesel you need to sell too. Uh -huh. you got a white diesel truck too. Oh, I'm going to pick two. I keep hearing that. Uh, the uh, GMC has a three speed transmission with overdrive, 305 engine, <laughs> good power steering, power brake, radio, even the air conditioning works. Need some Freon in it, but everything works. On Everybody needs to remember to eat some chicken tomorrow too. That Chick Fil A. We need to do that. There's not a Chick Fil A locally, but I might there's put one out. If there's I one in Oak Ridge, and I plan to have. I've never had a meal at a Chick Fil A, but I intend to have one tomorrow if I'm able. Right. I'd like to go over and buy something to support those people. I think they got a right to uh, their opinions whether it's contrary to the mainstream media or not. Well, I guess that's about it for tonight. Bob's going to doze off here, so I'm going to have to get interested in finding another occupation. This your uh, media star stuff won't keep you awake. We'll be on again tomorrow night, hopefully about 8 o'clock here and on Channel 12. By the way, we carry Channel 12 here on Ed TV, too. Just scroll down the page there. You can watch us twice tomorrow night. There you go. Watch us with one eye at the top and one eye at the bottom. And folks, we appreciate you. Happy trails. See you later. TTFN. <laughs>